In this video, we're going to be talking about what you should be doing right now in RV transport. We'll go ahead and get right into it. Pretty much everything that I'm going to share with you is nothing new. Um, I'm not going to be reinventing the wheel. This is not some secret of some crazy information that uh, you don't already know about. Uh, this is just a helpful reminder, hopefully. So uh, there's going to be three kind of points overall. Uh, number one, we're going to be talking about stopping the bleeding. Um, if you are in this industry, if you've been in here for very long, you can see how some of these slowdowns or issues that come up can take time. Um, if you've seen my previous video where I talked about the state of the industry, my, my perspective, my thought, and seeing kind of connecting the dots of, of who has the money and, and all those things, um, you can see how this, I think this is going to take a little longer than more than it would normally take for our industry to recover. So uh, first of all, um, I think the process of uh, of the recovery is going to take time, and I think that means for us, time is critical. Not every single RV transporter out there has the money to float a couple months of truck payments, of insurance, of even groceries at this point with the cost of everything going up. Um, this is... This is a special time right now, and uh, being able to just simply wait out the industry, I think there's more people than not, probably, who can't wait it out, who can't just sit there and hope they get a load and get enough loads to make things happen. So um, for those who are in those, in those positions, and all of us, hopefully, uh, we can take some steps to stop the bleeding, to stop the financial hemorrhaging of just only losing money and not being able to really put money back into it. So we're going to talk about stopping the bleeding first. The first thing I would encourage you to do to stop the bleeding is something that I've been talking about since the beginning of this channel, which is to create a budget. Uh, you Knowing your personal budget, if, if you don't know what it truly costs to pay all of your bills, and uh, if you are busting your budget, uh, you need to harness that in and, and pull it back in. You need to find out with inflation and the cost of everything going up, what is your true budget? What does it take to operate your home? Whatever that looks like, whether you have a family, whether you're, you're single, whatever that looks like. Um, I, would, I would venture to say your budget has probably increased without even adding additional things to it. Um, the cost of food, the cost of everything has gone up. So finding out what truly is your actual budget and uh, having just a baseline, just an understanding of where you're at. If, if this is not the time to truly find out what your budget is, I don't know when the, the proper time would be to. So if you haven't already, please figure out your budget. Uh, there's so many tools out there that are free, that are options to you. Um, one of the things that I use personally and for business is mint.com can connect all of your bank accounts, all of your loans, and give you a full financial picture of everything that's going on. Uh, you don't have to be a financial genius or a uh, you know an accountant uh, student of, of knowing all these things. Uh, give it some time. There's videos you can watch to, to help understand what's going on, and you can piece things together and find out what your budget is, where your financial situation is, uh, where it has been, and where it's the trajectory of where it is going. Um, I would venture to say there's going to be things you find on there that are just, whoa, where'd that come from? I didn't realize I was spending this much money on you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, you really need to get an understanding of where your budget is because I think it's probably gone higher through the roof, uh, at least in the last couple of years. Uh, if you haven't already noticed, you're paying for more for the same things that you have been. So that's the first thing. Uh, you need to find out where you're even at to find out, you know, where is the bleeding even coming from uh, to start off with. The next thing to maybe stop the bleeding financially is to try to trim down that budget. Uh, whether there's things that are 
outside of your budget that you had no idea, oh my word, what, you know, what happened here? Why did I spend so much money on this or that? Or, you know, was that a one-time expense? Is that a re reoccurring thing that has now been added to your budget without you really realizing like what, what's going on? I think you really need to take a look at there's guaranteed there's something, there's at least one thing out there uh, that you could cut off that you could just say, nope, it gets the ax. Uh, you can stop paying for the stuff that you really truly don't need uh, that you it's just it's inevitable uh, if you're if you're not tracking something um, it's gonna go all over the place so um, you really need to cut back on the things you can whether that's subscriptions to certain things to you, you name it there's so many things out there uh, I think try to cut back as much as you can because that's just the money that's going out the door or worse building your actual debt uh, through credit cards and other things. So uh, cut down those things as much as possible. Uh, I'm not getting into the nitty gritty. I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just telling you, stop the bleeding. Stop the output of the money when there's not much coming in. Uh, so that's the second thing. One last thought for you to be able to maybe stop the bleeding uh, when you are in a financial situation where uh, the, the more money you can retain and keep and the money that's not going out, the better. Um, I think a good thought would be is to not be maybe buying in bulk, maybe not be buying that extra uh, 20 pack of uh, you know paper towels. Um, I like to go to Sam's Club. Um, I like buying in bulk and not having to go every single week. Uh, I like to get as much as I can to get ultimately the, the best price and maybe uh, that normally is how you know things should be. You try to go for the best price. However, when you're in a situation where every dollar that you have, the last thousand dollars or whatever you may have, if you're not able to get loads, right now might not be the best time to be purchasing all those same things that do last a very long time, but it's a lot of capital up front uh, that really might hurt you in the short term more than it could really help you you know in the long term so just a thought for you there um, again I'm not a financial advisor I'm just saying uh, when when money is lean and things are tight um, buying in bulk for things that aren't necessarily essential for paying the bills keeping the lights on um, it may not be the best time to be going out and paying for all those things uh, up front so after maybe stopping the bleeding with making some of those decisions to cut back to to maybe be a little bit more lean uh, where you can be, where you can afford to be, um, I would encourage you, and you may not like this answer, uh, depending on your situation, your financial situation, if you know what that is because you have a budget now, um, if you need an extra side income, whether that's a side gig, some type of anything, you name it. Um, I, I would encourage you if you don't have the capital and if you can't weather the storm of, for a very long time because you just it, it's not in the bank account. Um, I'm not the guy who's going to tell you you should have known better. Da, 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 da. I'm not that guy. What I'm saying is humble yourself, maybe pick up a side job, pick up some side, some part time work, or maybe even look into other full time jobs. Don't limit yourself and, and put yourself in a box. I understand you may want to stay in RV transport and this is the, the dream job, the thing that you love, you want to hit the road, you want to do what you want to do. And I, I, I get it. I'm with you. But if if you're going to go down with the ship because of this and maybe we, could, we truly don't know how long these things are going to last, uh, some of these slowdowns. How, how slow is it going to be for how long? Can you withstand that? I think being willing to humble yourself and say, hmm, could I pick up some side work? Could I ask to do some, some jobs for some friends? Just cash money, you know? Um, are you able to utilize the tools that you already have? Do you have another vehicle? You could deliver food or people? Make some quick cash that way? You don't have to invest a whole bunch of money into a new business or a, you know an idea or a hustle or something to you know that that's just going to soak you dry. Just trying to start something else. Do you have something at your disposal now that you could utilize? A power washer? I, who knows? I don't know. 
could you mow lawns? Uh, you know, there's just so many smaller things, and yeah, they might not be crazy money, but there's something. It's something else. In the meantime, while you're twiddling your thumbs, pressing the refresh button on the load board, or refreshing your app or whatever you have for your transport company, there may be some other options to be able to bring in something. And last time I checked, something is better than nothing. And that's what I'm doing. I have a whole other business that I, I've started running, my dumpster rental, rental business, and I, I don't make much money from that. But I have other stuff on top of that that I do. It's worth the shot, it's worth the attempt. Shoot your shot. Try to do something else in the meantime. Doesn't mean you can't come back to RV Transport. Doesn't mean that the door's completely closed. I'm just saying, if you can slow down the bleeding, fantastic. If you can slow down the bleeding and you can kind of infuse some more money back into the party, that's, that's the ticket. Um, so I would encourage you look for other side, small part-time jobs or a full-time job temporarily, whatever it takes to be able to pay your bills temporarily to get through this low season that's, I think, lower than normal low and then get back on track later on. Um, do what you can, don't go down with a ship. Do what you have to do. <laughs> that may look different for different people, I get it. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just throwing some ideas out at you. So infuse some, some cash into the process and uh, hopefully that will help get you through this situation. And last but not least, uh, I wouldn't be the you know high mileage helper if I didn't say it. Um, this channel was born out of me very sketchy and sloppily trying to share as I learn about how to take care of my truck and the maintenance and all these things. Uh, it's come from destruction from when I first started. I knew nothing. I didn't have a tool. I didn't know how to change my oil. I was scared to death to do any of this stuff. Um, if you're sitting here and you have a budget, you're able to weather the storm, you don't need a part-time or full-time job temporarily to be able to get back on track later on. And if you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs, bored, out of your mind, if nothing else, maybe you could look into working on your vehicle to maintain your vehicle. Learn some new skills, uh, whether that's some small routine maintenance, whether that's watching YouTube videos about learning about this part of your truck. Pick some system on your truck and look up videos about it. Learn about a certain part what works, what doesn't, what fails, how often it needs to be replaced or cleaned or worked on or whatever that looks like. For you to be able to look into this, to learn maybe the easy stuff, maybe even learn some media, if you already know, if you're a little bit more handy, um, if you already know some of this stuff, have some tools, maybe look into the mid tier level of, of, of work that you could do on your own truck in the meantime. Um, maybe you could research some of the cheapest parts uh, from the cheapest places online. If you're sitting there bored, look into parts that you know need to be routinely cleaned or worked on or whatever. Find the best place to be able to order some of these things. And if you have the maintenance account, if you have the ability to spend some money on some of these things to do the work or maybe just have on hand, go for it the better that you're prepared for the future, even later on. You know, what What if you sit there and do nothing, but you had the money, if, if you do have the maintenance account to do it, and you do nothing, and then all of a sudden loads do come flooding in, and we have work all of a sudden, but now you didn't do your maintenance, you didn't take care of this or that, parts go bad, maybe you could have spent some time researching, cleaning, working on, replacing, whatever that looks like, Maybe you could have leveled yourself up, invested in yourself, even just a little bit <laughs> at a time during this slower season where you could level up. You could break through the next barrier of something that you're scared to death to even touch. You don't even know what's going on with that. Like, watch dozens of videos, read articles, talk to people, ask questions, investigate this is the time to level up. This is the time where you could be saving money down the road, crazy money down the road. Um, it's an opportunity for you to build and invest in your business and yourself really, because once you learn and have the knowledge and the skills, 
boom. I mean, you, you get to take that forward until you forget it in old age or something. I don't know. <laughs> so maintaining your truck, um, being able to have things ready to go so that when you do get the call, when you do hit that refresh button and something does pop up and you boom, hit them. Hey, I want this load. You got it. Boom. You're ready to go. You're rolling. You're good to go. You got things figured out. Um, now is the time to be putting in maybe the hardest work of, of all. All of these things play a huge factor. Money in, money out. Invest in yourself, save money down the road. This isn't rocket science. I'm not the first person who said this. I'm not the last person. It's this list that I really truly believe you should be doing. I'm doing it myself. Uh, I'm doing, I'm practicing what I'm preaching here. <laughs> I, I truly think limit your liability, stop the hemorrhaging, increase the, the money coming in to the degree you can, where you can, without going bust in other areas, and then upgrade and learn and invest in yourself. Um, that's all you really can do. Um, you're not going to force the, the, the people to produce campers for us to be able to take. Um, you have your time which is a valuable, valuable resource. Please don't waste it. Um, your time is extremely important. Uh, you could be investing yourself and you'll see the return later on. So uh, hopefully this was a help to you. Uh, if it was, please hit the like button, comment, let me know what you think. Uh, if I missed something, another good idea, if you have, please share that with us. I can only help the community. Um, I I'm sharing this because I, I care about you. Um, I'm trying to do what I'm, I'm literally talking about. So uh, I'm in this with you together. Um, I don't know what the future holds. Um, I can tell you uh, I'm ultimately with all of these things going on as, as scary and the unknown that we, we truly don't know uh, what's around the corner. Uh, I'm ultimately, you know, trusting in the Lord with my future, uh, with my present uh, situation right now and what's going on. And, uh, I'm doing what I can where I can, and uh, the rest I just leave up to the Lord. So um, that's where I'm at. I hope this video finds you well. Have a great day, guys. Stay safe, and God bless.